Triple H is bringing back banned WWE terms. Plus, the reason for EO Sky re-signing with WWE has been revealed. And could Sasha Banks appear on SmackDown tonight? Bit of speculation on the way. Isn't it annoying when words get banned? Like the way that YouTube has stopped us saying fudge, crumulence, beluga, and Falingadoo. I can't believe you just brought out Falingadoo. Yeah, I flapping said it and I ain't even shackled. Yeah. But WWE, they ban words and they have them for the longest of time. Mm. Triple H taking over as head of creative. He's released at least two of those words from their <laughs> chamber, according to the Wrestling Observer. Uh, Dave Meltzer noting that it's a more relaxed and calmer environment uh, and the words wrestler and wrestling are no longer considered dirty. <gasps> the dirty words talent were no longer, were instructed to never use that authorization. Uh, and now they're back out into the lexicon. That's crazy because WWE stands for World Wrestling Entertainment. No, it actually doesn't, young man. Oh, okay. It doesn't. It's an orphaned initialism. Okay. Which means that it used to stand for World Wrestling Entertainment. Yeah. But what they did a long time ago is basically just, just coined the term and just, ha just, just, Put copyright on the term WWE. Oh. Same as so it's an orphan in this initialism like KFC. Oh and no way! Yeah, KFC is an orphan initialism. Wow! Ah, oh, you learn something new every day. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Wow. Okay. That, that and Annie. <laughs> who will love you tomorrow. Uh, so WWE doesn't necessarily stand for wrestling anymore. Okay. Uh, but uh, now we can say the word wrestling again. Yay, which is, is nice. good. Is it, Vince has this weird thing about certain words that, not, that aren't allowed to be said uh, on shows. I think it comes back to, and, and because Vince McMahon always prides himself on being sort of an entertainment producer. Yeah. We make movies. For better or for worse, he always did. Mm. So he, he tried to move away from all the wrestling aspects of wrestling as as much as he could. Yes. It's not a new idea. Tuesday Night Titans from the 80s was basically a sketch show yeah. starring the wrestlers. Mm. Sorry, the entertainers. <laughs> um, but Triple H now back in, now running the show has gone, well, actually we should celebrate the fact that it's wrestling and they yeah. are wrestlers. And, I've, and, and that's the kind of sort of stuff that we saw with NXT as well, wasn't it? It felt very much mm. like a wrestling show compared to what we saw on the main roster. So I guess this comes as no surprise, really. I do wonder whether we will see other Vince McMahon-isms returning to the the language that can be used because mm -hmm. Vince has famously banned a whole bunch of other things, including the words belt and strap. Yeah. Uh, and his reasoning there has always been, well, it diminishes what they are. I kind of get it. Sort of, yeah, I guess kinda so. Kinda but you it. wear it round your waist, or at least some people wear it round their waist, so it feels as though it is it's a, belt. a belt, isn't it? It's quite literally a belt. Yeah. Uh, the word house show was one that was that Vince was keen to move away from as yeah. well. Uh, I guess the idea that it doesn't sound as, as spectacular as a live event. Yeah, I guess does that feel as though it's diminishing the importance of the house show? show? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe that's what it felt like, but you know, yeah. Uh, choke and blood were also mm. banned under, w, under Vince's watch. Again, if you're making a family show, yeah, uh, that'd be why they would be gone. Yeah, agreed. And, uh, and how do you feel about the banning of the word hospital? Hospital was banned, but but Madcap Moss could say Mospital. Yeah. Or was it, it happy? It was someone said Mospital, and I was like, oh, that's how they It's a big workaround. Teetering. That is. Yeah. Uh, the, the story goes. This is from the Observer from many moons ago. Dave Meltzer saying that Vince McMahon wanted to use the term local medical facility to stop wrestling fans, sorry, the universe from calling round to hospitals going, this is mad cap Are muscle, there? right? Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess also, I suppose, makes sense. Is it funny? I think, I think people probably started watching this video thinking, oh, they're going to go all guns blazing at all the band terms. But yeah. actually, looking at it from a from a very I guess so. unbiased, controlled perspective, yeah. actually, there's some sense to some of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But so I think I'm glad that we're embracing wrestler and wrestling again. Me too, which hopefully, hopefully, gets me thinking that perhaps we will see more sort of of the the classic esque graps on uh, the main roster as we were saying earlier in a news video it'd be amazing to have some more sort of physical bouts say like we see on NXT UK or NXT Black and Gold like uh, Ilya Dragunov and Gunter type matches like that which are like wrestling that exactly and it, and that you would be um 
you would be sort of remiss for not yeah sort of for using those terms, using yeah. it as a wrestling match. Ex- right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned the main roster there. I did, I yeah, I did. You did indeed say did. the words main roster. Somebody that made their arrival on the main roster is EO Sky. Mm. Saturday night at SummerSlam. There she is. What a joy to see. My goodness. Uh, th- now there was conversations about her not joining, not re-signing with the WWE at all. Why did she, Andrew? So the Observer, Dave Meltzer, saying the belief was that if she didn't get a main roster deal she wasn't staying and had turned down prior offers but obviously as we saw she got the deal and i think that's a very fair point to go off you know i'm sure for a lot of wrestlers the end goal for them in wwe is to make it to the main roster and uh io shirai definitely someone who i think had done everything within nxt at that point too so moving up to the main roster felt like i think a natural development for her she's more than earned her stripes without a doubt on the on the nxt roster mm. and it was right that she did that uh our pnw insider back up a couple of other sources and reports about the debut of this triumvirate headed up by Bailey, of course, Bailey, Sky, and Kai uh, at SummerSlam. PW Insider saying that the decision to bring Shirai to the main roster and Dakota Kai to SummerSlam, apologies, Shai and Dakai to SummerSlam, I think Io Shirai had already begun an agreement to come to the main roster with Io Sky at this point. But the decision to have them at SummerSlam was very last minute. We touched on this earlier in the week. Uh, we can add some meat to the bone on that now because Dakota Kai didn't get to Nashville until until the night before wow. the show. So she even said in an interview on The Bump that like her head was still spinning from rejoining the company as she was yeah. making her way down that very long ramp at SummerSlam. Uh, WWE didn't even file a trademark for EO Sky until the 31st of July. Wow. So this was very last minute, wasn't it? Incredibly last wow. minute to bring them along. And up until the, the beginning of the Triple H administration, there was no concrete plans for Bailey to do anything at SummerSlam. So it was Triple H that sort of, as soon as he took control, I feel like the first thing he did was go, right, am I in control now? Mm-hmm. Is this mine now? Right, cool. We're doing this. Uh, Bailey, Sky, Kai, get over there, planes, get over there, we're doing it. Oh, the right call to make though, wasn't it? Oh, because yeah. what a way to open the show and I think what a way for Triple H to make a statement that he is indeed now in charge of creative, which was a, ph- I think that was a phenomenal move on his behalf. Right, exactly. Now, fine now, Lamont. I haven't got me salt with me. There's no salt today. No salt today. Uh, I'm salty enough. Um, But take a pinch with this. Could Sasha Banks appear on SmackDown tonight? Could she? No. I've seen a few people talk about this, and Mm. I kind of feel like it's pertinent to bring it up. Put your sleuthing cap on. Tell us what's going down, Tom. Sleuthy cappy cappy. Okay, so Sasha Banks was set to be at a celebrity flag football game today. Uh, with the Los Angeles Rams. Now, she was uh, part of the team uh, on Wednesday. It was listed Mercedes Venado be part of the team. Um, the, the the schedule's gone out for today. She's not there. She's not listed for oh. either uh, the team that she was going to be on or the opposing team. Okay. So it's almost as if like she's not doing that event anymore. Oh, okay. okay. And there's obviously speculation that... Sasha what and happened? Naomi are coming back. Well, I'm wondering if... They're still down for a contract signing this weekend. They're yes. autograph signing this weekend. So... Not a contract signing. That, that'd, be, that'd be a major <laughs> giveaway. I mean, how incredible would it be if we see, you know, the uh, the faction of Bailey, Kai and Sky crossing between brands, you know, being a bit naughty, naughty, not really um, mm. dedicating themselves to one brand and perhaps just tearing things up on both brands, maybe all three brands with NXT, who knows? That would be rather a nice fitting way to introduce uh, Sasha Banks and Naomi again, don't you think? Mm. If they're coming after Liv Morgan, it would be nice to perhaps have Sasha Banks and Naomi on the sides of either, you know, either Bianca Belair or uh, or Liv Morgan Mm. with the champions, align themselves with the champions, which would be a smart move as well for them to maybe down the line put themselves in that title picture once again. Not only does it make perfect creative sense, as uh, my distinguished friend here (laughs) has said, uh, but it also keeps the wonderful Cultaholic podcast curse alive. <laughs> Should she return on SmackDown tonight? Very true. With the this this week's podcast already in the can. Mm, yeah, I'll, it, it's going to be an interesting thing to see. And it's sort of speculation. It is because it's a really long one this week and Fraser's on it. It is. I know. It was, it was like, it was bordering on... It's maybe one of the longest I think Dan was saying. It's longer than some WrestleManias this podcast this year, this week. Just a heads up. But it's better. 
It's cram packed with better <laughs> things. You're saying it's better because Ross isn't on it? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's creative con new creative control. Fraser's in there, got himself involved. Fraser. You know, <laughs> he's changing things up. Fraser lifted the ban on the word wrestling. The arrogance of youth right now, oh. knowing knowing what the viewers want. Oh. Putting it, there, putting it on the table. Track the arrogance of youth on the Cultaholic <laughs> podcast later today on the podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, tomorrow morning as well. It's Saturday morning, which means uh, it's the next best thing to Saturday morning cartoons. It's Matthew, Greg, and I doing the Cultaholic Classic Smackdown review. Woo! Hour and a half of me and Matt talking about old episodes of Smackdown. I hope you'll join us on the podcast feed exclusively for that particular bad boy. You got any nice plans this weekend? Uh, I'm going home for the first time in two whole years. Wow. I'm going home. Wow, how have you not been to the Yorkshire Dales in two years? I don't know, but it's been hurting my heart and I'm excited to see my cats, excited to see my family, and I'm excited to see some hills and cows and sheep. Oh, wow. And all sorts of farmyard animals. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to hearing all about your adventures back in to Yorkshire. Thank you. The gorgeous Yorkshire Dales await you. And we'll have more wrestling news throughout the day and across the weekend at cultaholic.com. Keys, keys. Love you, bye.